I like to be more polished, you know. I like to be more, you know, have stuff there and just kind of, you know, that's kind of how I like it. However, this morning I got up and, um, oh, <laughs> I don't know if this needs to go out. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> um, and my wife asked me to pray for her. I said, anything? Yeah, okay, cause you, you said pray for me. That's what you said. Okay, that's what I heard. And I said, for what in particular? And she said, just for so. I said, okay. And I began to pray, and I was kind of like all over the place. You ever have those prayers where you just kind of all of Some prayers, you know, they just kind of use for a specific thing, and it's kind of going, it's kind of flowing. It's like, oh, this is one of them prayers they might be able to record. This is a good one. You know, it's just flowing, you know, right now. You know, some, some prayers are like that, though. Some prayers, you know, you got an anointing. You feel like you have an anointing to pray, and it's just going, you know. And, and you're starting to bless yourself by what you're listening to. This, has anybody ever had that experience? I'm not saying that's the typical experience, but sometimes you start to bless yourself because your faith is now building because of the words that are coming out of your mouth from the very heart of God. Amen? Amen. So that's how some of those prayers are. This morning's prayer was different. It felt like it was scattered. Did it feel like it was kind of scattered? And my wife was one point like, help me understand, you know. And I was praying some things, and it's just, but it, but it was, something was bubbling in my spirit. Though I was, I was excited. I, I, it didn't come together cohesively, like smoothly, like I wanted it to, but there was an excitement. There was an anticipation. There was an expectation in my spirit. And I was just praying. I was sharing some things that, that I had gotten. Um, some things that I'd read, you know, some things that I'd listened to, and just some things that were happening um, in my life. But let me read to you this morning. So after I did that, I went to the bathroom, you know, went and sat down in the bathroom. Amen? Mm -hmm. And I got this text, and it says, do you have a word to bring today? I keep feeling I should ask you. And I said, Wow. I feel that I'm all over the, I'm being raw, I'm being, you know, bare before you right now. I feel like I'm all over the place today, but in a good way. Don't even know what I'm sensing. Don't even know if what I'm sensing can come together in a cohesive message. But I just began to weep as I read your text. I was praying with my wife this morning and trying to help her understand what I was feeling about our amazing God. And I said, then I said, text in the text, yo, <laughs> this would be a major act of faith for me to put something together. But yeah, I could trust him to help me make sense to bless somebody. LOL. <laughs> amen? amen. He said, amen. I felt you had something. As you minister, it will come together. I believe that. Just flow. Don't put anything together. I said, well, you won't have to pray me through this. But yeah, let's do it. Amen. Ask God for a verse. That's all you need. I said, okay, <laughs> I trust him, and I trust you, beloved. And that's how that portion of my morning began. But I was just weeping. I was in the bathroom just crying, just crying, you know, because I'm not even quite sure why, but I just felt the presence of God just on me heavy, heavy in, 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 in a, a, a a thick way. You know, somebody said there's a weight to glory. I felt the glory of God in my bathroom and I felt it heavy, but in, in, a, in a way that just had me, like I said, there's a spirit of anticipation. There's a spirit of expectancy in this time where so much is going on. You know, pastor talked about it and you're hearing about it. You can't get away from it. You can't get away from the, 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 the that report. Because that report, if it's not coming through your TV, it's coming through your radio, if it's not coming through that, it's coming through somebody calling you. You know, we got a call from, you know, family members saying that they tested positive. It's like, okay, all right, you know, what do we, okay, we're just going to pray. You know, you do what you need to do. And, you know, we were all together, so we, are we going to panic? No, we're not going to panic. You know, neither shall any plague, no calamity come nigh my dwelling place. It does not have the authority in our household. Amen. Amen. And that is our that is not just our profession or confession of faith. That is our stance that we're standing square on that. That is our position. And we're holding firm to that. And we're not going to give in. My wife said, should she get tested? That's if you want to get tested. You know, let's, you know, if that's what you there's nothing wrong with that. OK, there's nothing wrong with doing that. And I believe we decided that's not what we're doing. You know, that's not what we're doing. 
Um, cause she'd been having some symptoms, but long before that, just, uh, just some old stupid respiratory infection that try to have its place because we live in a fallen world. But I know that she is the healed of the Lord. I know that we have served Jehovah Rapha, the Lord God that healeth. Amen. And we walk in healing and in wholeness. So, but it's just been bubbling. I know some of you know that, uh, uh a couple of weeks ago, um, you found that I, I, I booked a, a, a guest spot on, on a TV show. And I was very excited about that. You know, it was very exciting. It was a little small thing, but it was, but it was a big thing at the same time. But in the scheme of things of what God has prepared for me, it's a small thing. Okay, so I, it, it's a big thing, but it's a small thing. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, all right. And, um, you know, so I was definitely very excited about it, you know, but I still didn't put all my stock in that thing because it's like this is just a moment. Even the pastor talked about the moments, you know, the moments are there are good moments, you know, that that we can get excited about. There are moments that kind of, you know, don't work out so well, but we're keeping destiny ahead of us. Amen. So we won't even spend a whole lot of time on the good moments. Let them do what they do and move on. Amen. Because. Because the very next, so you, you know, when you got that, sometimes you think work begets work. Okay, so next thing I know, um, I booked a, a film shortly after that. Um, and it's like, okay, you know, we got a momentum going. You know, it's like I'm excited. And then um, I had an audition um, a couple, few days ago that went really, really well, but I haven't heard anything from them. <laughs> okay, so what do I do now? So now do I go back down? You know, so now do I start to lose faith and lose hope now because, you know, it was going well and it seemed like it's not now. No, 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 no. That anticipation, that expectancy is bubbling in my spirit like you would not believe right now. Like you would not believe. And anytime I, there's even a, a shadow of a doubt, it's just like picks back up. And even that, even the, 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 the things that I'm seeing, we talked, we talked about destiny at, 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 at um, Vision Builders and there are different aspects to destiny. You know, it's not all about that, that ultimate thing because the ultimate thing is that, you know, well done, that good and faithful servant. And to take my, you know, that's the ultimate destiny. That's really what we're going for. So all these things are just part of that journey. And, um, but I'm just, I'm, I'm, there's a spirit of expectancy and excitement in me that I, I, can't, I, I can't explain it. But I, I know that it's there. I keep getting words of encouragement. Um, one of the words that kept, coming to me this, this morning, it was a, it was no good thing what he withhold. And I kept saying, you know, so I said, okay, I, I know that. It's, it was just something simple. It's not something new. It's not a new scripture to us, but no good thing would he withhold from them who love him, who walk uprightly before him. And um, let me just pull it up real quick because I want to um, put the, the word, it's most important that the word lives in us. Amen. Um, cause we serve, we serve the God of the word, not the word of God. I mean, we want to be clear with that. And what did I just do? There we go. Um, so that particular scripture for the, you know, so you can have it, so you can be reminded it's a simple scripture and, but sometimes the little things, little reminders need to come. And that is Psalm 84, 11 for the Lord God is a son and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. No good thing would he withhold. And I know that seems so simple and simplistic, but that's deep, y'all. That's heavy. No good thing. Nothing that we're supposed to have will we. He says he's our shepherd. We shall not want. We shall want for nothing. Amen. I know Psalms, you know the 23rd Psalm. People grew up learning the 23rd Psalm. But guys, it's not just cliche. This is, this is our reality. He will not withhold any good thing from us. Nothing. Nothing. So I'm excited about every day because I'm, you know, what's going to be my good thing today? What's going to be my good thing today? Amen? And I, and, I, and I get excited about that. And how, how is my good thing going to enhance or, or further, God, your, your plan? How does my good thing fit in your plan? Okay, so my good thing isn't just for me. It, 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 he would do it if it was just for me because God loves me just that much. That if only, if this was only to, some things he will do to just bless you. To just bless you, and, I, and I'm learning. I'm even learning that some things, just to bless you. Just 
I want you to be blessed. We talk, Pastor talks about that all the time. It's like, God wants to just bless us. He just wants to bless us because he wants to bless us. He just wants to bless us. And he wants to bless us to be a testimony. And he wants to bless us to be a blessing. There's so many dimensions and so many parts to, to, to what God is, is, is doing and wants to do in us. I know sometimes, you know, we can get so caught up, so caught up in, 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 uh, in how does this fit in, in, in your plan. And sometimes we just have to trust that it does. Because we, we serve a God who, <laughs> this is the prayer. I know I told you I was going to be kind of over the place, but it's coming together. But I got this morning that I serve a I got you, God. <laughs> And as and I was telling my wife, I said, I never said that before. I said, like the God of I got you. I was, <laughs> and it was like, this is sound kind of crazy. The God of I got you. You know, you don't have to worry about anything because I got you. You don't have to worry about, you know, about um, you know, coronavirus. You don't have to worry because I got you. I got you. And, and I'm taking care of you. So he is my I got you God. That's what he is to me. That's what he is to me. So I don't have to worry about anything. I don't have to, I don't have to worry about, about, about his plans for me in the future because I know it's, it's good. It's for good. He said, that's what he said. That his plans for me would be good. And it's not just for Michael, but I'm just telling him, I'm holding on to mine. You know, it's up to you to decide, you know, whether he's going to be your, I got you, God. But he's a God that's big enough to, to got all of us. He can get all of us. So I, I, I'm... Mm, my God, my God, my God, my God, my God, my God. Sometimes when I'm in the presence of God, it makes me giddy and silly. You know how when you're in love, it makes you giddy and silly. And sometimes when I'm in the presence of God, I just, I just like crying for no reason. Or seem like for no reason, because it's just his love just overshadows me sometimes. It just comes on me sometimes and just sits on me and gets all inside me and makes me giddy. Makes me sometimes my physical body just reacts. It just reacts. It's like it's like you know I don't feel like I can't contain you know the 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 the, 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 the power that he puts inside. The God that says no good thing will I withhold from you. So and I, when I talk about my, my career and we talk about, yes, the movie deals and we talk about the hit TV series that I'm going to be a part of, all that, but you know what? Even that ain't my ultimate destiny. That's part of it. That's part of his plan. Amen? That's part of his plan. Whatever, they, listen, your ultimate destiny ain't just to own and have a wonderful, a wonderful um, beauty shop with a whole bunch of people. Yes, that's part. I believe that a shop with a bunch of people working for you or you can not work if you want to. But even that ain't your ultimate destiny. But that is a part of the journey. That's a part of the journey. And, and, and I got you, God. It's like, you know, you go ahead and you... <sighs> Have fun. <laughs> this is what God was saying to me this morning. Have fun. Enjoy yourself. I know Joy, Joy, Joyce Meyer talks about sometimes, you know, something, just go shopping. You know, don't try to be sometimes so deep and so, so lofty up there. Just, just have fun. And, and I've been listening to um, uh, Conversations with God. It's a book by, uh, I'll give you his name. And, um, you know, I won't do that, but I'll give it to you later. Conversation with God. And I've been hearing some things that at a different time in my life might have almost disturbed me. You know, because we've been hearing some things even here about God and our place in God that's very different from what we've been hearing. And sometimes it kind of, you know, throws you off a little bit. And then you realize there's some more dimensions of God that we still have to discover. God is still showing us some things about us and about himself and about his character and about his nature that, you know, aren't very churchy, aren't, that, you know, that aren't very traditional, you know, that don't fit in with that mold that, that the body of Christ has held him in. God sometimes does some interesting things. You know, we talk about God going and going to some places we don't necessarily think we want him to go, but he's there, you know. 
You know, he's not a God of our traditions. He's, he said that your word, he said your traditions have made the word of God to none effect. So it's not, I don't want to get caught up in tradition. So I'm learning some things about God and I'm learning how God is, is, is ministering to me and using me to minister in some non-traditional ways and, and using some non-traditional people or, or to minister to me, you know, and, 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 and there's some going back and forth. I'm having some conversation. I'm finding myself in a situation where I'm becoming a Peter to a Cornelius. And if you know anything about that, you know, Cornelius was this man that served God with all his house. You know, he, he, he didn't know, he didn't have the scripture. He didn't have all, all, all the, the, the stuff that goes with it. He just had a heart. He had a heart after God's. And Peter was the one with the word. And Peter was the one, you know, that, that had the word to apply to him. And God put those two together. And, 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 but God had to go to Peter and say, well, you know, don't call, don't call what I make clean unclean. I know, I, I, I know some of you know that, and I kind of want to backtrack and not and cover some of that, but <sighs> raise, just raise your hands if you know that, know that scripture about Peter and sitting on the house. That, okay, if you, if you don't, that's fine. We'll, we'll, at some point, if you want to ask me after, we'll sit and we'll just kind of go through that. Because sometimes it's important to know some of the stuff that's in, in, in the word of God. So when we talk about it, it starts to make sense, you know. Um, but... I feel I feel like I'm a, a Peter in, in in a couple of situations with some people that don't they don't they're doing the right thing but they don't know how the they don't know through the word of God that they're doing the right thing. Does that make sense? And I'm finding it's my position through some people to show them. No, yes, let me tell you why you're doing the right thing. Or let me tell you why you really you know shouldn't do that. You know, and and God is using me in in that in that way. And God is using some of the people and some that don't really know God like I know him or think I know him to minister back to me. They're kicking either the word or kicking the principle of the word or the spirit of the word back to me. And it's, it's, I'm just, I'm just seeing God very non-traditionally recently. Non-traditionally. He's speaking some things to me that, that, I think there was a time when I might not have been ready for. There was a time when I would not have been ready to hear for ye of gods. Y'all know that was, that hit us, right? <laughs> there was a time when I would heard that that sound like cultic language. <laughs> yes, you know, and I know some people who talk like that, you know, and it sounds cultic, but it's in the word of God. And so we have to go to God. What, what, what does that mean to me? So there's some very non-traditional things. God is having me like do some non-traditional things and, 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 and just move in some non-traditional ways. But, and I'm not worried about going off into something crazy because I serve the I got you God. Okay? I'm not going to let you go off into something crazy because I know I, I got you. If we purpose to walk uprightly before him, no good thing would he withhold. He's not going to let us get out too far. Amen? I believe he's not going to let me get out at all. <laughs> okay, okay. He's not going to let me get out at all. <laughs> okay, because he got me. He got you. We come back. We keep coming back here. We keep coming back here and, 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 and connecting together of, under a corporate anointing. Now, when you put yourself out of that corporate anointing, now you might open yourself to a number of different things. But the people that are sitting up in here are smart. We know we get right back here under that corporate anointing. That if there's anything that may be a little off, anything, you know, God will show us. He'll show us. Because that's, 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 that's what the I got you God will do. The Bible says he will perfect those things which concern us. So I'm not even worried about going too far off. I'm not worried about going off at all because I know he's perfecting the things in me. And when you see other people, sometimes, you know, we can get real judged. It's like, you know what? God's got them too. God's got them too. God loves your loved ones, your friends, your coworkers more than you ever could. He's got them too. He's covering them. My children, 
He's got them. You know, there's some shaking my head moments with my kids, but God's got them. And I'm confident in that. I'm confident in that. That's what God is doing. He's bringing, stirring up in me a confidence. And I know that he will perfect those things. The Lord will perfect that which concerneth me. My, um, thy mercy, O Lord, endureth forever. Forsake not the works of thine own hands. The Lord will perfect. The Amplified says, the Lord will accomplish that which concerns me. That means he's going to do what he said he's going to do. He will accomplish that which concerns me. Your unwavering loving kindness, O Lord, endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your own hands. I don't know how much more I have to say beyond this. But we serve and I got you, God. If you don't get anything else, if you don't get anything else, be confident that God's got us. All the concerns, all the misgivings, everything. Somebody, there was a, a story once of somebody being, getting the elevator, these heavy, heavy, heavy luggage and, and suitcases and stuff. And they got in the elevator and they just sitting there holding and the sweat is just pouring down. And they're in the elevator and they're going up and it's like, and they're just carrying these bags and they're just heavy and the sweat is just pouring down and pouring down. And you think, what is wrong with that picture? All they had to do was sit that stuff down in the elevator. The elevator will carry you and the stuff. You don't have to carry it's weights and weights and stuff that are, that are not yours. God can handle you and your stuff and your concerns and your burdens. Amen? Trust in that I got you, God. Amen. I'm not going to.